Hello, this is Simon Hyatt. I'm the contributing editor of Singapore Business Review magazine. Today I'm presenting the Malaysia Technology Excellence Awards, celebrating the best, the most innovative and exciting technology initiatives in Malaysia. Winning in the Infrastructure Technology Conglomerates category is Petra Group. And I am joined today by its chairman and chief executive, Dr. Vinod Sekar. Vinod, thank you so much for joining me today and congratulations on your award win. Thank you very much, Simon. I'm, I'm proud and humbled to, to accept it on behalf of our group and on behalf of all my colleagues and, and workforce. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it feels good to be recognized for trying to do the right thing. Um, and I hope uh, this encourages many other companies to, to come forward and, and do the same, but truly humbled and, and grateful for this award. Thank you. Vinod, how is Petra Group leading sustainability efforts in various communities? Please tell us a little bit more about these initiatives. In many areas, I mean, I'm, I'm someone that believes um, that businesses can be successful and profitable on the basis uh, uh, of, of doing the work in the right way. Uh, tempering greed, we can still make significant profit and be sustainable and be innovative by raising people up. So if you look at our different businesses, whether it's green rubber, which recycles the world's number one environmental uh, hazard, which is tires, uh, or Petromodula, uh, which uh, does sustainable uh, building technologies, uh, down to vanilla, uh, our vanilla plantations, our vanilla processing center, which is both um, an incredible poverty eradication project and a very green, sustainable business solution. Um, so we, we tend to go look for these kind of businesses that, that, that can make money, but actually have impact on the world in the right way. With the hope being that when we do this, we show that you can make significant profit and be sustainable and lift communities up. Um, others will follow and say, well, you know, it's worth doing. And, and the, the, the key in all this is we look at profit beyond cash. Um, cash is important, uh, but the impact on communities is as significant because if we can enhance a community, we can lift them up, if we can lift the people within a community up that we work in, that we, uh, that we um, uh, make money off, then that just makes it a more vibrant community that has more wealth, that allows us to sell more products, that allows us to thrive more. It's a win-win. Uh, and I guess what we're trying to do now with all our different businesses, whether it's our modular building technologies or our green rubber recycling technology or our vanilla plantations, um, it's to show that this can be done, this can be done well, and a business can be very profitable in doing it. And hopefully others will follow. In your entry, you wrote about using technological solutions for poverty eradication. Can you explain how this can be accomplished and what is Petro Group's role in this? Okay, well, it's exactly how we do business. Again, you need to temper greed, okay? Um, you, need to, you need to make a decision that instead of making $100 million, you can make eight or nine. You know, uh, instead of making 10, you can make eight or nine. And then work out where, where, how, how you use the rest of that money. Now, in our case, if you look at our vanilla initiative, um, Vanilla is the second most valuable um, spice um, in the world. And one of those interesting things about that is you can actually allow smallholders to come and plant vanilla in one-acre plantations, which are very simple to do. So what we're doing is we're training people, we're, we're creating uh, smallholders to plant vanilla, which where we buy the products. So we fund them to set up the plantation, uh, their little one-acre um, um one acre uh, landlord, and then we show them how to plant vanilla, and then we buy the vanilla and process it. Now, in that process, they actually make a significant amount of money by selling vanilla to us. We process it, and we make a significant profit from it. So it's a win-win uh, across the board. So in this way, in Malaysia, for example, we are planning to do 500 acres to give to 500 smallholders uh, that need it, uh, that, that now can be empowered uh, to make an income that otherwise they were stuck without. Um, in India, it's already been done successfully uh, with the contract farmers. We call them contract farmers in India. Uh, and they make a significant amount of money. We help them, we train them, we give them technology. But we make the money uh, as well because we then get the vanilla beans and then we process it. And that value add creates, uh, creates our, our profit margin. 
Um, so that's one thing. If you if you look at uh, green rubber, um, where our raw material is crumb uh, from tires, well, we're encouraging small entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, young young business people to 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 make the crumb. Go collect the tires from small communities, villages, etc., and then we'll teach them how to crumb it. Then we will buy the crumb from them. Yeah, of course, it's much easier for us to have big crumbing systems, um, and it's much more cost effective. But by also including you know, uh, small entrepreneurs that want to make a bit of money by collecting these tires and crumbing it on their own with smaller grinding machines. Uh, we're able to empower them. We're able to now create another group of people that have significant income. Again, it's temper and greed. Um, these are some of the things we do, and we do it in all our companies in one form or another, even our food and business, uh, food and uh, beverage business, in how we hire, how we train people, in our modular business, where we bring in uh, individuals from uh, one of our programs, which is uh, My Skills, which helps uh, the most at risk youth uh, and teach them basic skills, whether it's motor mechanics or things like that. But those that have the ability, we push them up, we send them to a modular factory and we teach them how to make modular buildings. We train them, then they grow. They have, they have a skill set that most people don't have uh, and their lives are changed. So there are many ways we do this and many ways many businesses can do it if they chose to. You just have to put a bit of effort and time think, and thought into it. Uh, and it doesn't really impact your bottom line too much. In fact, if anything, it makes us more money because we have a more vibrant uh, community and a more vibrant uh, workforce. They all want to be there and they're all proud to, to support and help you. Within your company, how do you encourage your employees to practice sustainability? It's by leading, right? They need to see you do it. That it's not just talk. That that you know you're you're out there, and you're being part of the solution. And the key thing I tell everyone is, it's not the quantum, it's not the amount. It's just that everyone should do something. And if it's not money, your time. If you have a neighbor whose 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 son or daughter is the, is is doing their main exams, but you know they may fail their English or their Malay or one of them or their math, and that will affect everything their lives going forward. Well, maybe if you're good at it, you go give them tuition once a week. You know, spend an hour. It, it's simple things like that. It doesn't matter what you do, but do something. And that's how I, how I encourage our team anyway, um, just to go and do something. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's money, it's a little bit of money. If it's a lot, it's a lot. If it's a bit of time, it's a bit of time. But the key is to do something. And I value what they do. So for me, when you get your bonuses, when, I, when we decide on how you get your bonuses, when you get your bonuses, if you get your bonuses, it's also based on whether you've done something. And they know this. They know that we judge you not just by how efficient and how good you are at your work, but what have you done to impact the community that you're working in and for? Uh, and that plays a role in the, in the rewards you get within the group. Pino, please share your thoughts with us on the significance of winning this award. I think the significance is that the company that does what we do, you know, that is successful in doing what we do in many fields, in technology, and they're all interwoven, but it tries to be sustainable and innovative and tries to lift communities up. Um, the fact that we can win an award like this, which is very prestigious, um, I think that means a lot. And more importantly, I'm hoping that it leads to others feeling that, oh, you know what? We should do this as well. We should start thinking about how we can be more innovative uh, in the way we, we help our communities and uh, in where we do our business. We should be more sustainable because more recognition that they get from, from organizations like yours and, and journalists like you and editors like you, the, the more they are compelled to be greener, to be more sustainable, to, be more, you know, to, to, to do more for the community, uh, I mean, it's human nature, isn't it? If you get a pat on the back, you feel good. <laughs> and uh, and I'm hoping that you know people seeing that we're getting a pat on the back on the back for doing this will make them want to do it. We want to do the same, and we want to be recognised for doing the same as well because we think we can do better, and that's good because all companies should think they can do better and do better than even and we do. And and I have to tell you that none of this would have been possible without the incredible team I have, the colleagues I have, you know, the workforce I have. Uh, they're, they're the ones that, look, I'm just a pretty face they roll out. They're the ones that do the work, uh, and they're incredible. Uh, and so, you know, I owe, the group owes this award to them 
Uh, without them, we wouldn't be doing all this. Dr. Vinod Sekar, thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations once again on your award win. Thank you very much.